Hey! You see this guy? Who knew this imbecile would be the biggest pain in the butt for me? But he is not the only one. These lands are filled with different tribes and civilization. You've got the pirates ruling the seas. All sorts of vikings scattered in the world. These medieval soldiers. I've seen goblin gangs and a bunch of other smaller communities. If that's not enough for you, just just, just look at this. What is this? This is some sort of like frost small ice monster. I mean, who would be stupid enough to wake something like that up? <clears throat> Yeah, if I even want a chance to survive these lands, I need to build, no, no, I need to establish my own civilization, my own workers, and eventually an army to exert my power upon those other civilizations to show that this world is big enough for all of us to share wheat. You will understand what I mean by that pretty soon. But anyways, to establish my civilization, I'm going to be needing to supply my people with food, clothes, weapons, a uh, place to sleep, and of course protection from the dangers of the other civilizations. And for a successful army, we need to recruit soldiers, archers, commanders, medics to heal everybody. But not only that, we're gonna be needing naval vehicles and siege machines like battling rams, trebuchets, and catapults, and a whole lot more if we're gonna be going to conquering these massive cities and ships. So in this video, I survived a hundred days building a civilization, an empire in Minecraft. Boy, this was my biggest project yet. This video took me 54 hours, 37 minutes, and 50 seconds to the T to start and finish. So that was a lot of working, but if you do enjoy this video, please, please, please do leave a like on this video as it really helps the video out in the algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this, they are on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed. Subscribing makes a boy like me very, very happy. So make sure you do that. But other than that, enjoy the video. Okay, back to day one here. This is day 37, Axis speaking here. And uh, you have no idea the things I'm dealing with. But let's just focus on day one here. I spawned on this little tree by the swamp and the first thing I encountered was a camp with a fire and a bed so I looked around and I bumped into this camper and I approached him very very carefully because this world is filled with different kingdoms that are not very friendly in the slightest. But the camper turned out to be fine, he offered me some trades for a pouch but since I had nothing I really couldn't take the offer but I did decide to take his bed and fireplace for completely free. And trust me, this could later turn out to be one of the best decisions I've made early on. Uh, but anyways, I saw this broken building by the side, which from that I took some wood and even some rails. Before I started making some basic tool, I encountered another camper who seemed to be trapped in some oil. But I decided to leave him because I really couldn't save him and uh, he really didn't have any good trades anyway. Now that I was able to make some basic tools and mine some ores, I decided to explore this swamp and uh, took everything I thought I would need. But that's when I first encountered the pirates. They were known to be the rulers of the sea for decades as they had multiple ships with supplies and very lucrative loot. Of course, I had to check if they were friendly by any chance because you never know. So I crafted a boat and I started sailing towards uh, the smaller boat. And I first sailed towards the smaller boat to see if I was able to kill them. But unfortunately, I was greeted with a warm arrow in the face. And uh, yeah, they just kept on shooting. So of course, as the idiot that I am, I thought the bigger boat would be more friendly. They had wheat and cow, so I thought maybe they could share some because that food could be very, very handy. And uh, they were friendly. They were. At least the farmers were. All the slaves. But afterwards, I got killed by some uh, empire captain or something. So it turns out they were not very friendly at the slightest and they have enslaved a bunch of workers. Uh, but I went back to the ship to grab my things and oh boy, oh boy, I barely got out of there. The Empire decided to just get revenge on me and just steal my precious boat. And uh, I was too wounded to fight for the boat so I just swam to shore slowly, slowly and uh, very painfully. But at least I had all my items retrieved. Night was falling and I needed a place to rest after a battle. So I camped on a nearby tower, which was stocked with some cookies, which came in the perfect time. So I just ate them up and finally I was able to just sleep the night away. 
The next day, I went out to look for some food, mine some coal, and set up a temporary station nearby. After mining a good amount of iron, coal, and some other ores, and also getting some food, I was ready to head out again to find a proper, proper place to stay because I was sick of camping around these little bases and sleeping on towers. I was walking in a forest and I suddenly saw this medieval tower of sorts and uh, the plan was to head inside and take a look but after some further inspection, I didn't think that was such a good idea. But don't worry, I'll come back to that to exert my power upon those peasants. You just wait, trust me, you just wait. But that was gonna be another day, so as the sun was setting, I found this beautiful area with a viking city, towns, rivers, and just overall seemed like a perfect place to set up my colony. First, I decided to say hello to the viking cities, my neighbors of course, and I'm just kidding. I was planning to steal some food from them, I was totally not saying hello. But of course, the vikings were not so nice about their resources, and I came to learn that pretty quick. And I may or may not have a whole city against me in the coming days. So we're getting off to the right track here. But anyways, at night I set up a camp on this beautiful riverside and just enjoy the view. Okay, day 3, let's get to work. So I started to prepare on how to craft a research book which will allow us to research agriculture, fishing, and actually managing the army. So I decided to start collecting some leather, wood, and cobble. Now you remember that rude viking that we met yesterday by that little cabin? Well, to deal with him I had a plan. Instead of fighting him, I thought I would trap him underground. So the plan was I dug a hole nearby the viking cabin and uh, I went to the viking house to provoke the man and uh, boy oh boy did that work. He came in flying on me hungry for my blood. He followed me religiously but little did he know we lured him right into the trap and uh, he was not happy about it. And I went back to the house and I was utterly surprised by a random woman just laying there but I still couldn't raid the chest in the house anyway. Apparently I needed to claim a flag which I, I didn't know what was that all about at that time. But I left the house and uh, I was ambushed by archers so I had to retreat and uh, they have no idea what they have started. Treating me like this horribly, I will get my revenge. But anyways, later I returned to the camp and I uh, upgraded my tools to iron and I was finally able to make the research book. So in order to get some gold for my research table, I went out exploring to the abandoned building nearby the viking city. And as I was right about to enter the building, I was attacked by this goblin gangling. And these tribes, colonies, groups were really getting on my nerve. I really needed to get my army established quickly to destroy these groups. But anyways, I was unable to get into the building that day, so I just had to make a runaway, which is slowly becoming a common theme in this video. So I went back to my house and I spent the night away reading the research book by the campfire. This is the day that I returned to that abandoned building and I still had one of my eyes out for those goblin things. But it turns out that the building was filled with villagers and it was actually a church. There were all sorts of villagers, we got clerics and librarians with some decent trades. Like I found this one villager selling infinity for 9 emeralds, I mean that's a bargain. But more importantly I had an infinite source of books really. And there were even some already enchanted books in the library but those weren't so great. No doubt the best item in this building was the enchanting table that was gonna come in very handy. So I spent the rest of the day wandering around the perimeter of the viking city exploring the structures around. I still couldn't get anywhere near the viking's weed so I just checked up on this abandoned castle that was kind of hoovering above the viking city and the loot was absolutely fantastic and I even got my first diamond. But more importantly I got a proper look inside the viking city and uh, it was massive. There were guards patrolling all over the walls and that's gonna be not an easy place to invade at all. And there were still guards on the towers outside of the walls that needed to be dealt with before entering the city. But enough of the viking city, there is still so much to explore on the outside. And uh, I came across this little small ice people community. They dressed as vikings but they were not messing around. They even rode polar bears which brought my heart down under a few attacks. And uh, yeah, I am not dealing with that today. So after running away yet again, I enjoy the skies and uh, I just took a well earned rest for the day I had. 
Day five. Um, you may have noticed I may or may not have forgotten to actually press the record button in OBS. For, so for the next few days, enjoy some replay mod shots instead. So day five actually started off with creating a mine as I was in desperate need of gold to craft the research table uh, to start my actual civilization. But the day started with an ambush from a bear, which was quite easily dealt with. But I did realize my little camping area is filled with grizzly bears, so I started to craft some bear traps and I even took it for a spin. It worked so much better than I expected and I was able to took a, uh, take a bear out like a charm. Finally, after conquering the bear species, sort of, after dealing with the bears, I was able to get back to mining and I found this weird cave area. Uh, I did get a bunch of diamonds and coal, but gold, gold was still nowhere to be seen. While I was mining, I found these two people just wandering around and uh, it was quite intimidating. But I killed them all pretty easily and uh, one of them actually dropped uh, three pieces of gold, which is exactly what I needed. They did also drop some random circuit parts which I had no idea what to use for so I just ignored that. Uh, but by the night I finally got to the research table and uh, started to look for categories to research. I was thinking of researching agriculture and fishing to start my civilization and uh, I still need to hire some people to do that. After these two days, I did remember to press the record button for the rest of the series, so that's good news. But for these two days, most of it was spent getting the annoying resources to build the research and engineering tables. But do you remember that tower that we saw last time? The one where I refused to mess with the guards? This time, I went back to it. Just this time, with the genius genius plan. So I broke out one of the glasses and I just kept attacking the cards from the outside. It worked so well and I essentially took out the whole tower. I did later discover that the guards were no longer that much stronger than me after I geared up. I did get a whole ton of diamonds. Okay, it was not a whole ton, it was like five. But I did get, also get some other loots which is pretty useful. But I'll, I'll show you this uh, the next day when I actually press the record button. But anyways, after conquering a tower, I went back to my camp and I saw this man on a horse. So I took him out in an epic battle and I just simply stole his horse. I took the horse out for a spin the next day instantly. And uh, I did discover some other civilizations filled with medieval soldiers. Which I was definitely not ready for. But it definitely did look like there was a lot of loot there that was going to be coming in very handy. But unfortunately, the horse was cursed and it later just glitched and drowned. I was, um, devastated. I was for about five seconds because later I found some industrial humps just a few blocks away. Now you have no idea how much of a game changer this is going to be because I really need a string and none. None of the spiders I've killed has dropped them, but I found out that I could just craft them using this plant called industrial humps. So I was finally able to craft everything and complete my research on agriculture after getting some wheat from a very, very convenient location. Neither did I know in the process I would anger a whole city for just stealing a few pieces of wheat. Oh, and at the end of day 8, I started laying out a little hut by the riverside after terraforming the area a little bit to make it look nicer. The next day, I went back to the medieval compound to launch a sneak attack, but I was appalled by their inability of these different tribes to just simply swim. Even with my armor, they were still a little bit too strong for me, but I did take advantage of their horrendous swimming skills. Now, as you have probably noticed by now, I'm a genius, and uh, I did find out that I could just take out these soldiers pretty easily if I just stood on the outside and took them out one by one. But it was just way too time consuming with my weak weapon, so I'm, I'm just gonna come back another time. In the meantime, I started to research on a leadership to get access to getting soldiers and workers, employees, and all the good stuff. And the requirements were pretty basic, but I was still short of spring, so I had to just keep getting spring from industrial humps, unfortunately. Slowly but surely, I was able to research a leadership and get a town hall started even. I started to research what a worker's recipe would be, and it wasn't too expensive, just some golden food. Um, well, at the start, I thought it wasn't too expensive, until I found out about apples. Who knew apples were gonna be the hardest thing to come by in this whole entire series. Day 10. What a remarkable day. All for the wrong reason. 
first things first, I went exploring around the area as there was still a lot for me to uncover and uh, I did run into some watchtowers, campers and generally the loot was pretty mediocre. First off, I went into the cemetery and uh, I had to be cautious with the suspicious chest lying around but it turned out to be okay. By the seaside, it was loaded with multiple just structures from like pirate ships, houses, camps and uh, even domes. I didn't know what half of it was, but the first thing I went for was the army camp. Now, they looked friendly, alright? They were pretty friendly, but I may or may not have provoked them with an attack, which turned into a whole spiral of stupid decisions that's gonna be made by me. I panicked. I panicked so hard after being so low on hearts, and uh, I was pretty far from home, so I didn't know what to do here. I just froze and, uh, yeah. You, you, you see this, I, I, I don't even know what happened, I just jumped off a cliff. Just think about it, I was low on hearts, I was scared to die, but I chose to jump off a cliff. Logically, I grabbed some materials and uh, I headed back to the death site, which was hundreds of blocks away by the way. Uh, but I did manage to get there, slowly uh, I went down the castle and I grabbed my stuff and uh, by miracle, there was just this apple that was in my inventory. I don't know where this apple come from, uh, but it did shock me. So while I was down there in the ruined castle, I decided to loot the area and uh, I got some very, very juicy, juicy rewards from diamonds, potions, and lots and lots of arrows, food, and iron, and all that good stuff. Uh, but unfortunately, the good news in there. But I did manage to find a second horse. I named it Lewis, because why not? Uh, but to be fair, Lewis would become a pain in the butt pretty soon. So I went back to the camp, stupidly, and uh, used some new strategies. And uh, to my surprise, I took out the camp by just dismantling them, man by man. Uh, I tried to not get them out to outnumber me, and uh, after some very close calls, I was able to wipe out the camp entirely. It did turn out that I saved a trader that was captured by the army camp, and... Uh, after saving his stupid beard, he gave me horrible trades. It was literally horrible. What an ungrateful old man. So I decided to loot the camp and after such a dominant display against the army camp, my ego went to the roof and um, I decided to charge towards the dome thing with no regard and uh, you can probably guess how that ended up. Yep, exactly what you thought happened. And also I respawned back at spawn. So that's great. After spending half a day getting back to my quote unquote house, uh, it was more of a bed on the floor and some wooden pillars. Anyways, we're getting distracted here. So I headed back over to the place of death and I just saw a frost mob by the way, on the way there. And uh, yeah, who would accidentally try to wake something like that up? So, <laughs> you know, that would be a pretty stupid decision. So on my way, I was attacked by this, uh, by a sm smuggle? What? <sighs> so I went back to my quote unquote house Reset my spawn point this time so that wouldn't happen again and I went back to the place I died while I was going to the place I died before. Yeah, this is getting way too confusing and uh, it turns out my items were nowhere to be seen. Which is fine, which is fine. The more important stuff was at the place I died before anyways. Uh, but we did get some good news in that after a while I was able to retrieve my items and uh, even beat the black guard. When everything went right, my ego came back into question. I tried to take out the rest of the guards at the dome, but thankfully the guards were on horses and uh, that was enough to scare me off and I just ran away. Day 14. Fresh day, new horse, and finally got back home. Uh, I instantly prepared to use my one apple to make the food bundle for a worker and after everything I was finally able to make my first worker. His name was Robbo apparently. I, why would I name a guy Robbo? What kind of name is that? Uh, but anyways, I even decided to feed him some delicious steak. To put him to use instantly, I want to make a crop farm and I started to collect all the crafting components. Uh, it took me the whole day, but at the end of the day, I did get it crafted and got it all set up. So now the worker was finally at work. First thing in the morning the next day, Robbo was off to his farm and uh, he was suddenly slow, especially without bone meal, which is starting to be another issue. But for the meantime, it worked. The next bandwagon I went straight into was a fish farm. I knew that in the 1.12 version that I was in of the game, uh, we could essentially bring back the OP fish farms with the fish farm and it would solve so many issues. It would help with our food storage, uh, get us some string, sticks, maybe some bones on the way and even enchanted books of course. 
So I went into the process of researching fishing and uh, I spent a good chunk of the day fishing for the ingredients. However, since I was low on string and the industrial hums were still coming in slow with Robo planting them, I decided to head out into the wilderness to try to look for some loot. And while I was doing that, I found this nether style castle nearby the Viking city and uh, it appeared to be infested with those goblin mutants we met a few days back. And uh, they weren't too hard to deal with as they were pretty stupid. I essentially just pushed them into the own, their own lava uh, moat and all the armors and shields just shredded. Unfortunately though, the inside of the building was still filled to the brim with these mutant things and uh, I just wasn't able to loot the pots without attacking them. I couldn't do anything, so I mean, I could have attacked them, but they probably didn't use string anyway. Why would goblins use string? So they probably didn't have any string, uh, so I just left. Day 16 was probably the most important day. Without this day, I, I don't think we would have been able to craft any farms. For the foreseeable future and now i'm making this sounds like i discovered some phenomenon here but hear me out so i went mining for that day and i came across this spooky cave area just uh, under my base and of course there was a lot of cobwebs and uh, that was when it struck me i could just break the cobwebs for string how how was i not able to discover this earlier this made crafting and researching things so much more convenient. Like everything in this mod pack needs string to craft and research. So now that that was sorted and it was a huge relief, um, I finally got the fish farm placed and uh, Robo went straight to work on that. He was not messing around. He was working two jobs, which is slowing him down, but I did appreciate his hard work. A remarkable day as Robo was finally named. Why? Why did I write that in the script? Nobody cares about this rubble guy. It's not even a good name. Oh my word. What am I doing? So I took out Luis, another name of my horse for a ride to the west. After passing the goblin house that we met uh, the, the other day, another frostmore apparently, and a western tribe, I found this weird church. This church? This church has caused the most miserable, depressing day in my Minecraft life. So why did this church cause me so much pain? Well, let me explain. So I saw this gold up on the tower and gold is a very important resource in this mod. I needed to make workers re just research things. So I got pretty greedy for it. So I decided to park my horse for the very last time essentially. And uh, I did get attacked by this rogue knight, uh, knight and uh, I was barely able to get away, uh, but I did. And uh, these coming few days after this, yeah, th they are the most painful I've ever experienced. I'll just let you be the judge of it. So after I ignored the signs of Odin, which in hindsight was a huge mistake, I proceeded the building and I talked to some friendly priests, killed off some zombies and realized that you can't break the blocks of the buildings until you have conquered it. So I thought, okay, I'll clear up the archers on the top. They didn't look too difficult uh, as they were the only visible, let me repeat, visible guards on the whole building. After I did that, I went down to this dungeon because I still need to complete that to get the gold. And uh, apparently that was this hall of tests that you can do. And uh, it's just fighting some Vikings. And uh, I got instantly murdered by two Vikings. Instant. And you may think, okay, it's not too bad. It's not like you haven't been overpowered before in this hundred days without your army. Uh, but this is where it all starts. So the next morning, I took some reinforced weapons and armor and I went back to the building to just gather my stuff, right? I wasn't even going to do the fight anymore. I, I didn't want to do it. The items were scattered all around the room and um, whenever I tried to grab my valuable items, which is conveniently on the very back end of the room and it wasn't near the door, the Vikings would just spawn in and kill me. Just, just like that. I didn't have armor anyway because my armor was on the floor because of the time I died previously. And I've tried multiple techniques to get my items. I've tried building up, locking the door, trying to grab it quickly. Nothing worked. The Vikings would just instantly kill me and I was not able to retrieve my items. Let me spare you the pain. I will spare you the pain. I was getting pretty frustrated and my items just despawned after a good chunk of time. So I just forgot about them. All right. I just forgot about them. So I spent the next few days going down in the mines, trying to recuperate all my lost items, like the iron, gold, emeralds or whatever, because I, I've lost everything. And, um, but, but at the end of day 19, I was able to get a good set of armor and tools back just enough so for me to get going. But yeah, it was still pretty painful.
Okay, fresh day, fresh ideas. I knew that I could spend a good few days mining and getting all my things back, but I figured there was a quicker way. So remember that medieval castle with the guards? I went back there, and I decided to take over the camp to loot your things, but the only thing is I was weaker than I was before, and I just could not afford to lose my items again, so I implemented the breaking the oak lock, killing the soldiers from the outside of the gate, and uh, just doing this over and over again. And uh, I was able to sneak in after killing a few guards, I grabbed the armor, which was very very good, and also the loot, which is also still pretty good. I got lots of books, weapons, and even food. After a long hard day of battle, I was able to wipe out a good portion of the camp, and even got better loot on the other side with a bunch of diamonds and wood, and uh, you have no idea, this came in such a perfect time. So after enjoying the loot, I started to take out the soldiers at the top of the tower, uh, but eventually left after I've got everything that I've needed. And uh, this camp, this camp did look perfect to set up a civilization, which I may or may not do in the coming days, uh, but that's going to be future days. So I went back home and I geared up Robbo with the new gear, and uh, he was actually looking pretty good with the new gear, uh, just hoeing up the fish and the wheat. So after all of that was dealt with, we move on to the next problem. Apples. It seems like apple in this mod pack just doesn't exist. It doesn't drop from leaves, I've tried that. Uh, it doesn't drop in any of the chests, I've looked into that, and just nothing. So other than the one apple that we found randomly in the world, there was just no apples in the world. And without apples, we couldn't craft any civilians. So I had to do what I had to do. I went into creative mode and gave myself a stack of apples. Or else this video just wouldn't be possible. Alright, we just couldn't grab any civilians, no army would be established, nothing. So okay, I, I just had to do it, alright? I had to do it. So I don't want any comments saying I got Apple illegally. No, alright, this was the only option that I had. So I want something like, in the comments like, day, day 20, day 21 is the reason that we're watching this video. Yeah, I want that. I want, I want you to comment day 20, day 21 is the reason this video came to birth. Day 22, we finally got a new worker. I mean, how did that happen? We still needed apples, but I, have, I found some apples in a convenient location. And uh, after making the new worker, he went straight to work on the fish farm. And the next farm I wanted to work on after that was a tree farm. But I, in order to do that, I still had to conduct some research on invention and engineering. So I was able to build a tree farm pretty fast. And apparently I didn't assign a worker to it. Looking at the footage here, I went mining? I honestly don't remember why I went mining without signing a, a worker. It could be because I need some gold for the worker or coal, but I guess mining it is. I went pretty deep into the caves this time. I looted some chests too to get some nice bonus loot until this happened. That genuinely scared me. That was the first time I've ever encountered one of those things. I didn't even know that was in the game. I mean, look at that thing. That is hideous. So after a mini heart attack and dealing with some more chest monsters along the way, the mining was a wrap for that day. Today is a special day. First off, I made myself a composter in hopes that I would start getting bone meal uh, to give my farm a kickstart. But of course, knowing my luck, the composter gave me a substance called compost instead of bone meal uh, and it didn't work with the farms. There was one work way around it, I could manually apply it to the crops constantly, but I wasn't gonna waste my time doing this as I am the commander of the starting army. So I ran into the viking house to attack it in hopes of some bones lying around, because it seems like I always do that whenever I face a problem, I just try to attack a house and loot it, uh, but in the corner of my eyes were bone blocks, it was a fossil! And you could see my excitement here in the footage, and the first thing I thought of was quartz, it must have been quartz, and that, that's probably why I've been ignoring it the whole time, uh, but after grabbing a good amount, I left back to home very very happy. The next day, I woke up in the same bed as one of my workers, which was very awkward, but I did realize one of my workers had died. Um, how, you may ask? I have no idea. But sadly, we mourned for his death for about two seconds because I remembered that I could just make a priest to bring the back, uh, the dead worker back. So that was exactly what I did and the priest did his job. And we actually got our unnamed worker back. Do we give him a name? Oh, uh, nobody cares. Who cares? I'm pretty sure you don't care. Let me know in the comments. Do you even care if we give them a name? Who cares, right? And uh, I did make him into a lumberjack instead this time, which is more important. And uh, I even gave the farm some love this time with some new bone meal. 
by the end of the day, I finally got my first soldier. It was so exciting. I gave him a sword and uh, in order to give him commands, I still needed a command baton. So I made one and I took my soldier for a spin. I tried to attack a cow, but couldn't at first because there was still some control conflicts with other mods. So I changed the button of the command to something else and it kind of worked. The soldier was not attacking automatically on command unless I attacked the mob first. It was confusing and I was worried, but don't worry, I learned more about this command pattern, how it works, and we did get everything sorted in the coming days. Right off the bat the next morning, I made a quarry and another worker along with it, and it was all going fine, but I did place a quarry in a location where, where the, there was this suspicious hole to a cave, and I know, I know for a fact that if I didn't cover that up, that worker would stupidly just walk into it with, while he was getting his food. So as fast as possible, I covered that up, and after that I made another worker, but this time I wanted to make him an archer. I have this really OP bow, it didn't have infinity, but the fighters didn't need any arrows anyway, they just automatically have infinite arrows. So I fixed up my OP bow and instead of using it myself, I just gave it to the archer. I worked on the tower a bit more later on, but I ran out of blocks, so I worked on training these two soldiers. Um, they were easily able to kill creatures, but my archer kept shooting my soldier in the back. So that was not very helpful, and don't worry, I did let him know of that. I ordered my soldiers to enter the castle area and destroy everything in their path, but they just ran away. Literally. Ugh, of course I can rely on them. I did find out the problem was that the town hall was not set up, so they were going back to the old town hall. Uh, but I couldn't rely on them anyway, so I took out some of the camp myself. I used some smart tactics to take them all out myself. After looting the Roman camp, I realized that this camp was probably a phenomenal base of operations for my army. It had all the space and protection that we needed. So now I have to move everything from my old base. So at this time, I didn't know I could just pack the soldiers and workers in my inventory yet. So logically, I just made them follow me to my new base. But while I was cleaning up our base and I did accidentally fall into this hole, my workers just showed me so much loyalty by jumping off the cliff with me. You know the saying, if your friend jumps off the cliff, would you? Yeah, that turns out to be true here. Oh man, I, I hate my workers. This was such a nightmare. So of course they left me no choice. I had to go on a journey to save my employees. I sacrificed my life, uh, led my employees back to the sun again. And the rest of the day was basically spent moving everything with my little backpack, setting every all the farms again, adjusting some things with the worker and the actual camp, like having another town hall for the workers outside the camp. But overall, things went smooth. Day 28, pretty much the same thing. Just moving things, moving, moving. A lot of moving things around. Day 29, a lot of moving things again. Moving houses are very time consuming, but we got there in the end and we got everything settled in our new army camp. Today, I continue with some meaningless tasks like making more employees, making food to feed them. But what was the most impressive thing I did today was that I was able to figure out how to use the command button more and I actually got my soldiers to attack automatically. I did show a little bit too much confidence in my soldiers and I tried to take my one soldier to take on a city defense and I wanted to take out one of the houses so badly but boy boy I was wrong. Me and my soldiers got our butts kicked so badly and I'm pretty sure my soldier died. I'm, I'm not sure. He, he may have lived, but I think he died. So, I had one issue with our castle. The soldiers, they didn't really move away from where the food was. Lazy pricks. I needed the soldiers to protect all the workers around the camp, and some of the workers were still outside of the actual perimeter. So I started working on a routine order for my soldiers to go around, and uh, this allowed me to set up patrol paths for my soldiers so they could walk around and kill any pesky zombies that would try to kill my employees, because nobody, nobody touches my employees other than me. But most of the day was spent changing the terrain of the castle so that my workers wouldn't get stuck, because the workers and the soldiers... They weren't the best at jumping over a block. Today, most of my time was wasted trying to research trade, which required emeralds, diamonds, and other things. I was a little short of the emeralds, and I tried to explore to see if I could get any, uh, but I just stopped trying after wasting the whole day. The first thing I did in the next morning was expanding the boundaries of my fish farm, because that one fish farm, that bad boy, has been feeding our entire army for weeks. 
And the second thing I did was allocate another worker to the same fish farm to accelerate our food production. And don't forget, you also get enchanted books, overpowered tools, weapons, bones, just such great loot. This farm was so OP. We are gonna need a warehouse to store all the items coming in from all the different farms. So after setting up the warehouse, or at least the start of it, I had my courier ready and boy, the courier having him run away, taking items from farms, placing in the storage was a lot more complicated than it needed to be. So I spent quite a bit of time setting all that up. Day 35 was pretty much the same day. A lot of working with the storage and trying to get the courier set up, but we did get it going. Then I made myself the animal farm. Finally, I set it all up near the entrance of the base and a good amount of time was actually spent painfully getting all the mobs in the little fence area. The next day I continued that pain. The worst thing was there was this little corner in the walls of the castle and the actual farm where the farm's boundaries doesn't reach and every animal in heaven was hanging out there. And for the love of God, I was not able to move them out of the hole to barricade it. And for the rest of the 100 day, I have never managed to cover that hole up. I've never barricaded that hole. I've Trust me, I've tried multiple times on multiple days. It's just never worked. So I just had to expand the boundaries of the farm later in the few days. Uh, but when the sun was setting, I thought it was a good idea to launch an attack with some of my soldiers on the Viking ritual house on the border of this the massive city. And uh, let me remind you, remember that frost mall that sleeps close to the ritual house? When I deployed my soldiers, they thought it was a good idea to attack the frost mall over the viking ritual house. Yeah, I, I panicked, I tried to stop them, but my soldiers were charged with so much confidence, I placed the other soldier to help him out, and we changed the plan. Apparently, we're going for the frost mall instead. In the midst of battle, we were ambushed by one of the vikings on a polar bear, uh, which I did lure away from my soldiers. Uh, and surprisingly, my soldiers were actually doing a good amount of damage on the frost mall, but the distraction of the polar bear riding idiot took the better of my mini army. I slept the night into day 38 and I rushed back to retrieve my items where I fell in battle. Uh, but the freezing ability of the frost mall kept luring me away from my items. But after countless failed attempts, I was finally able to lure it into the waters and slow it down. Uh, I tried to even take it down with my flame bow, but apparently shooting it with a flame bow while it was in the river causes a ginormous amount of lag. I don't know why. So the frost mall can count himself lucky this time, but I will be back because I couldn't just have a frost mall laying in the river a few blocks away from my employees. But I packed my things and I went back to the base to grab a priest and a town hall to revive my fallen soldiers. But this time, unfortunately, the bravery in charging the frost mall meant I wasn't able to place a town hall before the battle. So they were actually gone for good. Man, this is such a sad day. After a bad night's sleep and mourning about my soldier's permanent death, I realized that our storage system was full, so I had to make some more storage blocks for the warehouse. This increased our cap capacity from like 1,700 items to over 8,000, so that should last us a while. Now that the storage was dealt with, it's time to bring back my fallen soldiers. I went to work making more soldiers and equip them with the armors and weapons. Uh, just when I was doing that, I did check my warehouse to see if my workers have fished up anything good. And jeez, there were some incredible OP bows in that storage that my archers could definitely use. Plus, I have a combination of bows with pretty much every enchantment possible, except infinity. But that comes in soon. Just, just wait and see. Day 40. I have let the frostma live for way too long. This time, I had a town hall set up and even a priest to revive all my soldiers simultaneously during the battle. And again, my soldiers dove into battle with no fear of the frost maw, and I did provide them some assistance to get them over a block, and uh, the full force of my empire was focused on that frost maw after that. I did not even engage in the fight. My soldiers took it out fairly easily. Uh, the unfortunate thing was, because the Frostmaw's last hit, last hit was not hit by me, but my, instead it was my, my soldier, I didn't get the Frostmaw's drop, which was this cool magical item that blows ice. But nevertheless, it was still a victorious day, and I was so proud of my soldiers, so after packing them up, 
the priest and the town hall, I took them to face the Viking ritual house. And the deployment went smooth, and this time I took part in the fight myself. But who knew? The Vikings were a lot tougher than the actual Frostball. I died pretty early in the battle, then it was followed by my last soldier's death. And upon my arrival back on the scene, the priest had been murdered brutally. So I was in disbelief and I tried to grab all my items back, but I was chased onto a pillar by like a brute viking. I had to just rush in to get my items back and I retreated temporarily. And I even bowed them down, which in hindsight which would have probably been a good idea for me to start with. But nevertheless, I was able to take them out gradually, just not enough to get all my items back. After days of battle with the Frostmoor and Vikings, I decided to blow up some steam and uh, I went mining for some gold. I went down the quarry and I was instantly met with some daunting screams and I was attacked by this ghost figure. To this day, I have no idea what attacked me but the figure shot some sort of fireballs and I had to leave the area immediately. So that completely contradicted my blowing off steam mindset. But after that little panic attack, I was able to grab just enough gold to make one more priest uh, to use to revive all my dead soldiers and priests from my last attack on the Vikings. So after bringing everybody back and trying to launch another attack, the vikings got smarter and this shirtless man instantly targeted me. And uh, my heart got pretty low so I had to run away yet again and my soldiers all died again anyway. But my relentless nature defined my abilities as the emperor of this army. So the next day more soldiers were packed and we got ready for another attack. And uh, after being a little bit more organized with our tactic this time, we were able to pile on the bear riding viking and take them out with ease. I also saw the shirtless man again and this time I deployed 3 soldiers on him and uh, we were slowly chipping away at the vikings one at a time but when the vikings started to come in numbers we struggled but we were still able to hold a fight. Day 43. We kept attacking the vikings and you know what? I'm sick of the vikings. I really am. They're really getting on my nerves here but my army was kind of struggling and eventually we just weren't able to run away anymore. The next morning, after I got all my items back, I took a break from launching attacks and I started to work on increasing the boundaries of my other farms like the tree farm and the quarry. Uh, the quarry was causing some issues where the workers were just not able to work on it, so I spent a lot of the time tweaking around it, uh, but I did manage to get it working near the end of the day. Day 45, I spent the whole day just making more soldiers and I decided to add some medics to my army. Uh, it was just a lot of making food and all that but it was still a very productive day and now we were ready for another attack on the vikings. The attack the next day didn't start off so well. The medic first of all just wandered off to a polar bear and to this day I question why he did that. But after a long day of back and forth with the vikings and multiple sacrifices from my soldier unlike that medic. We did clear a good amount on the first floor, dealing with like 7-8 vikings at a time. I did die multiple times during the process, and my soldiers certainly did too, but I was able to revive them constantly and we just kept the pressure on the vikings. The next morning, I ordered my soldiers to start entering the viking ritual house and it was empty on the first floor so we started attacking the second floor and the second floor was still filled to the brim with vikings. My soldiers got decimated. I tried to attack the vikings on my own and it ended up like how it always does. It was clear that the vikings were too strong for my mini army. The only good thing that happened the next day was that I found an infinity bow from my fish farm in my storage so I could finally uh, use a bow again but it was almost broken so I did fix it up in the anvil. Alright, today I need to take a break from the vikings today. Behind our base there was this massive castle but this one is one we've never seen before. It had a house in the center and it was super guarded. While I was sneaking into the castle I was killed by one of the guards so I had to go back start clearing up the upper deck of the castle. I had to start taking care of the arches first from each of the towers and the loot initially wasn't very good. However, I did get a musket, which is very cool and it did a good amount of damage. So I spent the rest of the day just clearing the whole castle deck of guards. Next day, I researched on ways to improve our farm's efficiency. We can do this with enchantments and two upgrades, but we still need to research so many categories. But good news was, I did remember that allocating more workers 
to a farm would just be efficient enough anyway. So after doing that, I went out exploring in the completely other direction that I uh, did previously. And I came across this house. But of course, the tradition with this world is that everyone is always angry with you. And uh, that was exactly the case here. I already had so much on my plate, so I just left those people alone. I went back home and uh, at home, I started to research how to make some siege machines. Day 51. I started the day stealing some wheat from the Viking city just to remind them that I was still here. And uh, after establishing my dominance, I went on an underground journey for a quest to find lava. What am I doing with that said lava? Well, nothing good, that's for sure. But trust me, using lava in battle will be the best decision I have ever made in this video. I mean, just a few minutes later, I tested the lava tactic on a dungeon spawner and every mob in sight was wiped clean. I was able to loot the chest with ease and even got a lower 3 book with that. By the way, while I was mining, I don't know how, but the chest monster probably dropped something and I was gifted with jumbos all of a sudden. And uh, it essentially lasted until the next time I died. And uh, even then, <laughs> well, you'll see yourself. I will never forget this day. This is the day I created a trader. I spent the whole day crafting him and working on getting him the backpack that he needed. And this guy, this guy was such a waste of the civilization's food for the rest of the 100 days. He did nothing. Like, I mean nothing. I'm just wasting your time even talking about him. Let's just move on. I mean, he was such a prick. Back to a useful day. This day, we find out how powerful the lava bucket truly is. So what I did was, I strategically placed myself on the walls of the castle, and I lured the enemy into the corner, and I just poured the lava bucket on them. It took mere seconds, seconds to completely kill the guard. So I went into the castle, I lured a bunch of them into the corner, and I killed them over and over again. I did die once during the process when I was trying to lure them, but other than that, it was all plain sailing. I spent the next day taking on the rest of the guards out with TNT and even tested my boomerang. That, that thing is so satisfying, definitely my favorite weapon so far. I checked on the inside of the house expecting nothing, but man how stupid do I look now. The house was filled with food rations, wood, I mean tons and tons of wood, weapons, loads of iron, and I came out with 35 diamonds along with the other loot. I went back to my base a happy, happy man, and I upgraded everything, and I spent the food rations on making 4 more soldiers and 2 more workers. Day 55. The day we end the battles between me and the ritual vikings. Before we get to that, before we get to that, I did get a lot of tedious work out of the way, and one thing to note is that my dumb Kore, yeah, he, he wasn't the most talented in jumping. After days of seeing my soldiers deteriorate to those shirtless imbeciles, I took things to my own hand and I burned the building to the ground. I had no mercy in my heart and I embraced all the pain onto that stupid building. As I watched the building burn, I gave the remaining vikings a good hot bath and uh, I did kill myself once in the process. But that was totally on purpose, totally. Because I want to, you know, emphasize with their suffering. I went back the following day and continued dishing out my lava strategy. I did face some trouble when trying to kill the ritual house guardian, basically the boss battle of the building. He was fully geared with diamond armor and all that good stuff, so it took him a while for him to actually take damage from the lava. And uh, me? Yeah, I am not very patient. I tried to assist the lava and deal some damage on him with my axe, but uh, he, he was way too strong. I did learn my lesson, however, and I just let him burn while I was AFK. After all that, I cleared out the building of the remaining losers, and then I claimed the flag at the top. And you know what that means, now all the items and things in the building was mine. There were a bunch of coins, goods, and just miscellaneous items, but the most useful thing was the extra weapons, ores, and armor, because that, that was gonna come in handy in reinforcing my soldiers with some proper proper gear. Today, we celebrate our victory over the Vikings, and with that, one of the civilizations on my revenge list has been ticked off. So, the next civilization I want to conquer was the Pirate, and this time, I want to go in with a full naval vehicle system and a huge army. So, during this calm before the storm period, I want to research naval warfare and begin working on crafting a boat catapult for the whole day. Next day, Mining, mining, mining. Just a guy digging ores away until 
I saw a man on a pig. That man was fast, but when I got back down, he was stuck, so I took care of him. And while I was mining, I got this piece of cloth thing from one of those chest monsters, and I had no idea what it did, but I decided to just wear it anyway. You know what they say about day 59? Day 59 is a good day to work on siege machines. Those bad boys, man, they require a lot of research. But I continued working on it, and I even started to re-equip my soldiers. Today I went on another exploration out in the wilderness. I think I went out to find some obsidian for another portal, but I got a lot more than just obsidian. Anyways, I looted some empty castles. The loot was good, but from the top of the castle, I could see this boathouse. The house was okay, but more importantly, I found a lava pool. Yeah, that came in at a very good time. After grabbing a good amount of the obsidian, I went to find a place to sleep and I came across another one of those Roman outposts. I didn't want to deal with it yet, I'll come back for it another time, so I just slept in one of those army camps that I had attacked beforehand. Day 61, you remember that dome that we met earlier? I went back to it, but this time I applied the full force of my army on it. Wow, you saw that? That was probably our most dominant attack yet. The army is coming along really well and I let my soldiers know of that. But afterwards, I looted the building and there wasn't much good in there anyway. However, there was another one of those army camps near the dome over the river. So I took my soldiers there to launch another attack. And this army camp, this one looked stronger than the previous one. But we just kept attacking it into the night. You may or may not have noticed this by now, but this attack, no, no, it did not go so well. All my soldiers had died, and I just had to just take the rest of the army out on my own. But fortunately, I was a guy with a lava bucket, and you can do a lot of damage with a lava bucket. After taking out the whole camp, I looted the area, and uh, it had okay loot. But I did this more for the glory anyway, so after all of that, I started to go back home. Day 63. I met a lizard. That is a big lizard. It had a lot of health too. Uh, I took care of the lizard with some lava and I looted the chest. Uh, that was a weird encounter. That lizard was so pointless. But back to what was important. I went back to the army camp to revive my soldiers with another priest. Uh, because the first one had died on sight. So after packing up, while I was going back home, I decided, you know what, why, why not attack the Roman outpost? What, what could possibly go wrong? I could use the armor to equip more of my soldiers, and you can never have too much armor. So, next day, after a well-rested sleep, it was time to take on the Roman outpost. I just went straight to work and I burned that thing to the ground. No more fooling around and fighting them, there was no point anyway. I just burned it all. Okay, okay, it's not as dramatic as I'm making it out to be. The fire didn't even spread more than like 10 blocks, so I still had to attack the Romans myself. I just climbed up a pillar, poured lava over them and let the lava do the work and it seemed to work pretty well. But finally, the next day, I was able to loot everything and yet again, the loot from the Romans never disappoint. I finally got home in the end, and uh, you see, using your soldiers are easy during battle, but there's a lot of downtime between battles where you have to re-equip everyone. So I start to do that, I start to re reorganize everything for the rest of the day essentially. Today, today was a very boring day. I did a lot of just grunt work, and I had to go back to the Roman outpost to grab the rest of the armor that I hadn't grabbed the last time, so I was just doing a bunch of that the whole day. Unfortunately, it was the same thing the next day. I started to double down on preparing for my attack against the pirates, and I made a whole load of medics, soldiers, archers, and commanders for the whole day. Today, I continued with the previous day's work, but I found out that something had killed all my animals. So I had to take a break from all the army things that I was doing and I went to look out for some animals. I got a few sheeps and chickens in but it was still nowhere near the capacity as before so that was a bummer. 
Next morning, time to do something exciting. So I took my newfound army to test the waters a bit. And what better test than putting my army against the Frostmore? So I deployed my archers first, and while I was deploying the other troops, I saw the Frostmore's health go down fast. That thing was going down rapid. I haven't even finished deploying everyone, and the Frostmore was just taken down. It was so fast, in fact, that I wasn't even able to get the last shot in so that I could get the reward. So that happened again. I didn't get the Frostmoss drop again like the previous time, but that's alright. I was still very happy with how my army did. So I decided to take them out on the Goblin House that we encountered ages ago. I thought, why not? We're here anyway. Let's take out this Goblin House and see what they're holding up. So I got it all set up, but my soldiers weren't the best at getting upstairs. I'm pretty sure uh, we know that already. So I had this one soldier taking out the whole second floor. And he took out everyone on the second floor. The man just went crazy. I showed him my appreciation and I continued raiding the building. There wasn't too many guards left. There was just some on the top floor which was easily dealt with. But after everybody was cleared we started to collect loot. Day 70. Today I made sure that every corner of the goblin building was looted. And after I was sure of that, I decided to pay a visit to the Viking city on my way home. Well, at least the corner of the city. I was still bombarded with archers for the day, uh, but no fear, a man with a lava bucket, that man stands a chance. And that's me by the way, I'm the man with the lava bucket. So after a vicious battle, I freed the animals from the captivity of the Vikings. Uh, it's the least that they deserve, so I had to do that and I was going back home feeling great. That exact feeling didn't last so long. I ended the day off catching my workers sleeping during the day. I was gone for two days. Two days and look what they were already doing. The next day I needed to do a lot of mining. I needed steel to research more into naval warfare and I already have some in my possession but I don't remember where I found it. Maybe I mined it or found it in a chest. And the only other way to get steel was to research refining and make it. But I figured I could just mine it instead because I was just short of like 3-4 pieces. But I was so wrong, the end of the day comes and I still didn't have a single steel. So I figured the next day I would just work on researching refining and just smelt the steel. I figured that was the only way left. And uh, so to do that, I needed to gather some netherrack. So there's going to be no choice, but it was finally time for me to go to the nether. After a short trip back into the mines to gather some obsidian that I was short of, I went into the nether and uh, I grabbed everything in sight as I do not want to come back here. No, no, this place is way too dangerous. But thankfully it was all sorted and I was finally able to research naval warfare. And in order to craft the boat catapult that we wanted, we needed a bunch of materials. Which was not very difficult to get, I pretty much have everything. Well, everything except cactus. You see, I live nowhere near a desert, nor some cactus. So I plan to head on a journey, but who knew this journey for a cactus would lead me to one of the most exciting and uncovering exploration trips in this 100 days. First, before we did that, I wasted the whole day just seeing if there was any cactus lying around, but that was to no avail. So in order to guarantee myself some cactus, I made myself a nature's compass, which essentially allows you to pinpoint locations of a biome, and uh, in our case that would be a desert of course. After making the compass, it turns out we were 2700 blocks away for a piece of cactus. Great, of course. Strap in boys, it's gonna be one heck of a journey. The next day, I was on my way into the unknown, the first thing I encountered was these two buildings. It seemed like it was some sort of temple or some camp where people stayed at. I tried to approach the first one before being ambushed by a bunch of men on horses. So I did some lava pouring and I tried to enter the building. But no, no, you saw what that man just did? He attacked me from like five blocks away. So there was no way I was contesting him. Things were going well with the other building, uh, but it seems like the other guards just spawned in late and it didn't seem like it was worth battling for, so I left and I spent the night traveling by boat. We opened the next day with some beautiful scenery and also some weird structures. Uh, first, there was a bunch of pyramids with Egyptians and uh, they were of course not so friendly in the slightest, uh, but the good thing was there was a village right in the middle of everything ready to be looted. I started looking in the area and I found a bunch of crops, even apples. Day 75. 
a little late for apples, but I took it anyway. Uh, there was also some pistons as decorations, so I took those because those things would be coming in very handy when we start making siege machines. The most interesting thing that I found was these wooden crates, which acted as shulker boxes, really. So it came in at a great time because my inventory was starting to get really filled up with all the loot I've accumulated. So the rest of the day was just spent looting the desert temple nearby, and there was even some diamonds in there, so that's good. Day 76, I was back out there and we finally got our cactus. I grabbed a good amount and also I did get some cactus seeds along the way just to be sure. And afterwards I hopped back onto our boat and while I was sailing back, I encountered this strange... I don't even know what it is, you can just have a look yourself here. It was some sort of terracotta thing, I don't know, but anyways there were other things to explore so I checked it out and I grabbed even some more cactus. While I was chopping down some more cactus, I came across this little market area. Thankfully, it was safe for the first time in a while. The people were actually friendly, and I could even trade with one of the sellers. Uh, the trader sold some sort of unique potions, but I really wanted it, but I just didn't have enough coins with me on this trip. At night, I needed a place to sleep, and that's when I came across a massive city. Like, this thing was literally huge. I two, three, four times bigger than the Viking city that we have at home. And uh, I managed to find an entrance and the gates actually started to lower. There was no way I was going to die out here. There's no way I'm going to get my items back if I did, because this is like 5,000 blocks away from my house. Uh, but I did go into the city cautiously and they seemed friendly. After taking a nap in the city, the next day I started to explore the rest of it. And boy, I am not used to the friendly cities. There were actually a lot of good trades, and the city was filled with life. It was so good to walk around without being attacked constantly, and I even came across this area. It looked like some sort of like cooking station. I don't want to know what's going on there, but I also did meet the king of the city apparently. I mean, I couldn't really tell, but looking at this room, it looked like the king's room. So I, I got there, and I couldn't stay in that room for too long because it was way too tense with all the guards. But of course, you know me. I tried to loot this city, but I left because I just couldn't loot it without conquering it, and there's no way I was attacking any of them. It was way too tense to stay in the city for long with all the guards looking around. One misstep by me and I would be dead. But the rest of the day, I spent traveling back home. It was a long, confusing way back, but this one time, this one time was where I was actually happy to see the Viking city again. Alright, finally back home and finally got that boat catapult crafted with the cactus. But before I could take it out for a spin, I had to do some crafting for the ammo and the body armor. Thankfully it wasn't too hard after I did some research, but I still had to mine first before I could craft the ammo. The final day before the attack, we got the ammo sorted and I took it out for a spin even. I didn't quite get it to work, but that was just only because I was dumb. I didn't know you had to press space to shoot instead of I thought it was the mouse apparently. So the next day, right before attacking the pirates, I tested the catapult one more time. That's a little bit more closer than I would have liked. Boom. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Now that that was sorted, it was time for battle. Revenge against the pirates. Dating back all the way back to the first day of this 100 days. Alright, good luck everybody. I'll be out for a couple of days taking on the pirates. You, 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 take care of everybody, alright? Alright, here we are. That ship, and also that one, also that one. It's time for me to get my payback from all those days ago. They really caused me so much trouble. I first decided to attack the smaller boat, and everything was going well so far. Alright, let's check this boat out. Anyone on here? Oh, okay, okay. All right, calm down, calm down. You good? Are we good? Oh, there's one more. There we go. What's this in? What? The emperor? Where's the emperor? Oh, is that guy? Alright, now everybody should be dead. There we go. Just a bunch of fish. Alright. That's... Uh, 
be good food for the empire at home. Day 81. Look at what a beautiful day it is. This time I attacked again, but took my catapult. Alright, let's hope this is close enough. I don't want to get too close. Okay, alright, that did not work. That did not work. I'm gonna take this boat out first. Whoa, bam. Come on, man. Come on. First off, the catapult sucks. But unfortunately, I died to it, so I had to go back and I tried to get all my items again. See this boat? See this boat? <sighs> I didn't bring a flint and steel, did I? I didn't bring a flint and steel. After that, I decided to continue my attacks on the second boat, the bigger boat. We stormed the boat filled with soldiers, and my army even went into the water to attack everybody. We were actually doing a lot better than I expected. And while my soldiers were actually busy with the guards, I took out the archers on the upper deck. Then it was time for me to just claim the flag and announce myself as the ruler of this ship. Carry this one, right? There we go. Let's go, dude. Oh, bone wheel. This would have been so useful for the start. Today, it's not about the loot, it's about conquering this ship. Excuse me, madam. I'm just gonna take a nap here. I continued looting the boat the next morning and I even found a book. What is this? Whoa. Whoa, what is this? Whoa, how did I not get this at the start? I probably did and I probably threw it away. I did get it in the start, alright? I did get it in the start. I was just being ignorant and I probably put it in the chest somewhere. Uh, looking back at it, that book would have been very useful in the start. Anyways, I continued cleaning up the place, collecting my soldiers again, and also trying to revive the soldiers that fell in battle. Oh, four deaths. Wow, that's a, a new record. Basically, I spent the whole day cleaning up things, but I did manage to get back home before it was too dark. Ladies, let me in, let me in. Just checking the chest. Hey, chump, you are lucky, extremely lucky. If I had been and still, I would have blown all this up. You live another day. Yeah, you better, yeah, you better run here. Get your butt in there. Oh, what? Is this your twin? Drown. Drown. You're never coming back on this boat. Oh, hey, how's it going? didn't want to kill him there. Oh, here we are. Home, sweet home. So I'm just gonna take a bed. I'm just gonna take a nap here. <laughs> wow, he, he went straight up and back to work. I am impressed. Wow, he doesn't have a name, but man, he, I, I like you. I like you. After checking up on my workers and putting all the items away, I was straight to work on making all the siege machine types in the mod for the final showcase on day 90. I got started on making a mobile turret, and if you are wondering, if you're worried that I'll mess it up, I will be hiring siege engineers to actually operate these machines, because the last time I operated it, it didn't go so well. Next morning, straight to work on the boats to load the machine with. And I even took it out for a spin even. That was good. A nice and sturdy shot. Alright, now that that was good, I fixed up some storage issues with another Corier. And uh, you know how time consuming those Corries are. Also, I did spend the night mining. Today, I made some more fiery or explosive boats, something in those realms, uh, but just spent more time making all those siege machines, specifically the standing catapult. I know, I know, the catapult didn't go so well last time, but hopefully with the siege engineers operating it instead of me this time, it goes better. The army was looking really solid so far, but of course, you can't have an army without a trebuchet. So, I made a trebuchet. I still needed some clay to make the stone projectiles, which is actually the bullets, so I had to dig up some clay nearby. After that was sorted, the next machine on the list was the battling ram, and we made that quite easily. The model of that thing looked incredible. It was such a beautiful machine, and uh, hopefully that thing, it tears down those walls on the city. Guess what I did today? Of course I upgraded my storage. 
After upgrading my storage for the last time, I went back to work on packing for the final attack on the city. I did make a lot more soldiers and siege engineers for the battle too, so that was good. Because the more the merrier, they say. Day 88. I decided to spend all my diamonds. There was no point in hoarding them now. I will go into that city and I may not come back out again. So I went to work on crafting diamond halberds, swords, armors, all that good stuff uh, for my soldiers and myself of course. I did enchant the armor with as much as I possibly could from the fishing farm and after all that I started to equip the soldiers with just at least something. I, I had to make sure they all had some sort of armor and a shield. I continued more with getting the army ready on day 89 and I went mining again. Alright, alright, we are almost done with getting the army ready. I still had to train some of the siege engineers, or at least I tried to. I didn't really have a target for them to attack, so it didn't go so well initially. The final day before we attack. So what I did today was I took out the siege machine and the actual engineer near the city so that he had more of a target to shoot at, and uh, he shot at some vikings, and it actually worked. After finalizing the detail at home, everything was ready to begin the long-awaited war. All right, it's time for the attack. I started to deploy all my siege machines and soldiers, and uh, it all seemingly went well, but some things, you know, some things never change. Why? How? How is he attacking himself? Of course, my siege engineer shot the projectile like two feet away from them. Oh man, that just I just can't get away from that, can I? Uh, but after deploying all the troops, the battle was truly on. I remember it being so tense and you had people flying in every corner. There was just so many people and I even joined the fight myself. Here we go. This is about all the times I was harassed for just taking some wheat. Go, go. Alright, I'm getting in my I'm getting in my weapon here. Here we go. Let's get in the Where's mine? Where's mine? I think that's mine. Alright, move, move. We took out pretty much the whole front gate area of the city and I even started to burn the walls down with my flaming bolt. That thing was so fun to use, it's just so fun, I had to hop in, it's just my siege engineers was too dumb to use it so I used it myself, it was quite fun, but trying to get all the gates of the city to open was a different story. Alright, this should blow everything up, let's open the gates up. How? How is that gate not open yet? Okay. Right, here we go. Here we go. No, no. TNT everywhere. Once I used the TNT, the gates came crashing down. I went into the city heads on, charging in, and my soldiers did too, but you know, just look at this. My own soldier did this. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, 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 They're shooting me. My own uh, soldiers are shooting me. Jeez. All right. Yes, I was very close to death there, but anyways, we went deep into the city and more vikings just kept coming out, and my army started to fumble a little bit. Next morning, time for me to revive all my soldiers and uh, that's a lot of soldiers. But anyways, I tried to enter deep into the city until even more vikings spawned in. Alright, so far this is just some civilization. Oh, okay. Alright. Alright. Okay. Alright, I need to set this up quick, dude. Here we go. Put food in. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, nope, nope. I cannot deal with that right now. They've guarded my- they've guarded my town hell. They've prevented me from setting up my troops. I had to lure the vikings out and clear my way into the center of the city, but I was able to start getting my soldiers and my army into the city, slowly but surely. Hopefully this is enough. Here we go, just deploy all of them here. He's stuck in a block, he's stuck in a block. Get, get out of here. Go, go, go. Let's hope we clear some people here. The attack did good. The soldiers were fighting the ground of vikings and I did my job by taking out the archers on the boundaries. Uh, things were going well. Night came and remember when I said things were going well? Well, I meant at least until this point. Here we 
here we go. Boom. The archers, the archers, the archers are the main threat here. Day 94. I started the day trying to get back into the city. Some issues that I have was that I was constantly running out of food and arrows, so I had to go restock soon. But at the moment, my newfound soldiers were holding on to the front gate area. How much hearts does he have? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, how much hearts does he have? Now, why can I shoot my bit of an arrow? So you've got to be kidding me, dude. I swear, that guy is the toughest man I've ever fought with in this whole save, dude. I've been. Ugh, it's a sharpness five sword. It's a sharpness five sword. Finally. Okay. All right. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me here. Today we went deep into the city, but the legs started to wear off a little bit. I couldn't set up a town hall and my soldiers deep into the city because food was starting to be a real issue. So I had to go get wheat from the outside of the city and I started setting up my soldiers again with that food. Now that I was finally able to set up my full force into the city, the soldiers got to work on the city center. Day 96 comes and literally all my soldiers have fallen. So I had to get a priest to bring them back. And uh, while that was going on, I went into the city center again and I started to dismantle that place a little bit. No, don't push them towards me. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Day 96 is the day I realized that even with my army, the Vikings were just still too strong, just too much in the numbers for us to deal with. So we could just repeat the cycle of reviving everybody, bringing everybody back for another attack. And uh, we could do this, but this will make us surpass the 100 days. So I had a change of plans. This plan will be much more evil and brutal, so this was perfect. So what I did was I went into the mines for one last time, a quick trip to grab a bunch of lava. I think you know where this is going with. Uh, the plan was to bridge up and pour lava on the whole city, on every building, the walls, the people, and just everything in sight. Day 97 comes and I started the day by using the lava on the entire corner of the city. And as you saw, it went pretty well. We took them out with ease, but if you're using lava, there's always that threat that you can get burnt in it as well. Good, good, good. Let's retreat our lava. Oh, no, 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 please don't die. Please don't die. I cannot die. I need water. I need water. I need water. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that was so close. That was so close. Ooh, that is as close as you get. Uh, but afterwards, thankfully after dodging that, I went into the city and I started to burn down the buildings with my flint and steel first. Just try to burn down as much as I possibly could. And during the process, I took out as many Vikings as possible too. Things were going according to plan. Until I broke my flint and steel. This? This is when I realized that I need to be more extreme with my lava. No, my flint and steel. My flint and steel is gone. Next day, that was exactly what I got to work with. I started to bridge up in hopes of making this path in the air where I can just spray lava onto the buildings and underneath. Overall, it was going really well. I mean, of course, we had some hurdles. Nope, nope. That's not smart. That was not smart. That was not smart. But the plan was working, and I could feel the pain of the Vikings seeing the lava pour on their faces, and they couldn't do a thing. Look at them, like pesk. They can't even do anything. And uh, yeah, that is satisfying. Look at the destruction I am causing. Look at that. Yeah, I don't care about the loot. I just care about killing every single one of them. Yeah, look at them run. Look at them run. I'm destroying this whole, this whole wall. All of these walls, all of them people, they're all gone. They're all gone. Here we go, another one. Oh, they're following me. They're following me. Look at this. Look at this. Come here. Come here, everybody. Come here. Yeah, just stand there for me. Perfect, perfect. Just right there. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's a perfect location. Yep. Just stand there for me. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Come back here. A little bit here. A little bit here. 
Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Look at that. <laughs> Remember when I just wanted a piece of that? A piece of that. Man, I enjoyed that. I, I really did enjoy that. Seeing the Vikings suffer directly beneath me. I continued burning the houses and I got to work on burning the last section of the city. The marketplace. No! <sighs> yeah, that was always gonna happen, wasn't it? Ah, <sighs> things are going so well. Of course that happened. That was always gonna happen, wasn't it? So, fresh out of bed on day 99, I tried to retrieve my items to burn that last section down. Come with me, through this. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, go through that, go through that. Yeah, good idea, good idea, everybody. Yeah, the whole day, I never got my items back. The Vikings were smart in guarding my items and it definitely weakened me and there was no way. No way, I'm going back to my base on day 99 for some cobblestone. So I spent the day enjoying messing with the Vikings. You just push him in. Just push him in, yep. Great job, guys. Great job. Okay. Don't want to go in there. Don't want to go in there. Yeah, follow me, follow me. Follow me here. They always get tricked by this little pad. No, I don't want to get stuck in it. I, I'm so stupid, dude. I'm so stupid. I'm so... Let's throw them out. Yeah, come with me, come with me. Yeah, you, you too, you too. Come with me, everybody, everybody, come with me. God damn it. Yeah, come with me, come with me, come with me. Yeah, yeah, perfect, 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 perfect. Perfect, yep, there we go. Sneaky, sneaky, push, push them in, yep, yep. Perfect, perfect. There's barely any houses left. Let's just look, take a look at the... Wow, look at that. There's... <laughs> this is all left of the house. Yep, I'm gonna squeeze in there. Whoa, bam, ninja style. Never mind. Well, looking back at it, I got the better of the Vikings in some scenarios and they definitely made my life hell even on day 99 in some scenarios, but I do think I took the win on this war. Day 100, we have made it. Countless days of hard work, sacrifice, all leading to this moment, the destruction of this city. I just spent the day going into spectator mode and just enjoying the war, enjoying the destruction we've all been through. Day 100. What a day. I lost all my items. I mean, literally everything I gave, I lost all my, just everything. I lost my items, my army, but you know, it's good to see the destruction I've caused. Look at that. I mean, this was once two towers. They no longer have a home. The destruction I've caused, I mean, they still have this little area, but other than that, it's all gone. It's all gone. And that's a wrap. I have survived 100 days in this war, building my own empire and taking on these different civilizations. I mean, that was crazy. That was one hell of a journey. But if you're still here, you've obviously enjoyed the video. So please do leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. There are a bunch already on the channel anyway. But yeah, I, I don't know how to end these videos usually. So just, just bye. All right, I'll see you guys later.